Welcome back everybody. Let's now take a look at your entertainment calendar for this weekend. Miles for Smiles Youth Day Fun Run is an initiative by the Milton's Matsumela Attorneys in association with the Sipla Foundation and the Trail Fund. This fun run is open to all ages and is an opportunity to make a difference in the lives of children born with cleft lips and palates. All the proceeds from the event are donated to the Sipla Foundation Miles for Smiles initiative that raises funds for Operation Smile. The event takes place from 10 a.m. this morning at the NSRI Milk's Bus Run, uh, Beach Road, and entrance is 90 Rand. Nova Foundation's concert program uh, is uh, presented by Mandla Mlangeni, or presents rather Mandla Mlangeni live in concert this afternoon. Well, Mandla Mlangeni, who is the Standard Bank Young Artist for Jazz, will be performing with a seven-piece band live in Gallery 8. They perform pieces from Born to be Black, a celebration of Conscious Soul, a musical vision which encompasses the echoes of South African township groove and uh, no hope Holds a barred freedom alongside the vibrant chants of the drum. You can catch the event at the Norval's Foundation, situated in Stienberg Estate, and ticket prices start at 200 Rand to 500 Rand. Right, so that's uh, how our entertainment calendar is looking like uh, for this weekend. Uh, but for now, uh, Johannesburg born and now London based author Tony Peake's new novel titled North Facing explores themes of atonement, homosexuality, repressive politics in the 1960s South Africa, racism, and cultural dislocation. Now, the book takes us back in time to an intense week in October 1962 and follows the story of a 60 year old man as he relives the events that occurred at a school that he attended when he was just a 12 year old boy. Tony Peake joins us now via Skype to help us unpack this read. A very good morning to you, Tony. Thank you so much for joining us and a warm welcome to Morning Live. Thank you. Good morning, Piwe. You know, uh, the, the title of the book, North Facing, is just enough on its own to arouse so much curiosity. Do you want to take us through what this book is all about? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, well, as you said, it's the story of a 12-year-old boy, um, but very significantly of English parents who's growing up um, and just outside Pretoria and is at school in Pretoria. Um, and I wanted to explore partly, um, I mean, as well as his sexual identity, his cultural identity, um, and what it was like back then being an English-speaking and South African and a South African of English parentage. Um, because Paul, the central character, the young boy, has a terrible sense um, in the novel of not fitting in, not belonging in this very kind of codified hierarchical society that he's growing up in. Um, and the novel is really um, looking at, at how he tries to make sense of this and to try and find a place for himself in this society. And in, in the book, you also take us back to a very sensitive time in the South African history. I mean, talk to us about the significance of this period. Um, sure. Well, I, I, I think, I mean, the, the, the spark for the novel, actually, um, and why it's set, set during that week in October 1962, was um, because that was the week of the Cuban Missile Crisis, when one thought the world was about to end. Um, and I remember very clearly as a boy going out to watch the sunset every evening, because somebody had said, if the bomb drops, we'll, um, we'll, we'll see a change in the sunset. And uh, this was the first kind of time for... Um, myself and the boy in the novel and the boys in the novel to become aware of the wider world. Um, and uh, South Africa was very kind of cut off from the outside world. So this was a very good way of exploring what was happening inside South Africa politically at that time in terms of the outside world. And also because South Africa used um, its kind of position to uh, sort of, well, it, it positioned itself as a kind of bulwark against communism and used this as a way to justify a lot of the repression that was being put in place at the time because it was post Sharpeville and it was a time of tremendous political tightening and, um, um, yeah, and uh, and so it, um, I think um, it, it, the, the looking at communism was a very good way in to look at actually the, the, the political setup in South Africa at the time. Us reflect and uh, you know today as we celebrate a moment in history in South Africa uh, is uh, is the youth day I mean talk to us as well about Paul Harvey who is the main character in this book he returns to South Africa a couple of decades later what happens next 
Um, well, he, his older self returning later is um, is a chance for him, um, or the need for him to 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 go back and look at his younger self and to try and make sense of everything that happened to him, in terms of him so wanting desperately to fit in. Um, he allowed himself to be used in ways that were, um, were were ultimately very damaging. And I wanted to to explore this, explore the way in which back then a system like apartheid actually damaged all the people living in the country. Um, I mean, some obviously much worse than others, but even a white privileged boy like Paul um, Suffered, suffered in ways too. Yeah, and uh, Donna paint us a picture of the contrast between his 12-year-old self and him as an older man in his 60s. Um, yeah, certainly. Well, um, as the, the structure of the novel is very much the tension between the older self and his younger self. And his older self has been able, um, through living his life more... Um, more honestly and more openly than he found it possible to do as a young boy at that time, um, has found it possible to kind of understand and come to terms with um, with himself as he was then, and to to try and make amends and and expiate some of the things that happened um, back in the early sixties, which he was an unwitting participant in. Book uh, is very, very important, Tony, because that's where the storyline is. Essentially, speak to us about this and how you manage to capture the smallest details that makes this book more interesting. Um, well, I, I went back in memory to my own time um, of growing up, just out, well, inside and just outside Pretoria, um, and um, used yeah all the memories I have at that time. But because I because I look at them through the through the lens of the older Paul, I hope I sort of get a and and how things have have changed. Indeed, South Africa is thankfully a very different country now to the country it was then. And talk to us about how you explore the themes of uh, awakening, the themes of uh, maybe culpability and the atonement in this book. Um, well, I, I, I do that through, uh, Paul is, is particularly keen to, to go back and explore what happens to a very important teacher at the school, a man called Spear, who was very largely responsible for opening his eye world and also to his own sexuality. Um, I can't say too much about what happened um, in discovering Paul's, it's covering Spear's story. Um, without giving away um, the kind of twist and punch at the end of the novel. Indeed, and I guess uh, all that we have to do is simply to buy this book. <laughs> well, Tony, thank you so much for your time. Hey. Thank you, too. It's very good to talk to you. Likewise. Now, there is novelist Tony Peake, Andy John is via Skype to speak to us about his current book titled North Facing. Well, you can also join us for our Sunday book feature to talk about some of the books that you're currently reading or have read. Whether you are a lone reader or belong to a book club, just send us some of your favorite picks. All you have to do is to email Facebook or tweet us a picture of the book with a relevant caption by using our social media platforms. You can use our, our handle at MorningLoveSABC or hashtag MorningLoveSABC. You can also tag or send us a Facebook message on our page that's morning lab sapc or send us an email on morning lab at sapc.co.za